Hey, it is Troy Stavros with Doorbell Real Estate, and it is time for my monthly market update to talk about what is happening in the East Tennessee and Knoxville housing market. We are looking at data through the end of September just to see how things compare to one year ago, as well as how things are looking right now when we look at all of the data. Let's jump in. Okay, this first graphic on the right is the current month through September uh, of all of the East Tennessee market. So these are all of the surrounding counties. Uh, and just looking at all those numbers as a whole, you can see home sales are down 22.9%. Pending sales are down 0.7%. So those are starting to catch up a little bit. Um, inventory of homes is still down 4.3% compared to a year ago. New listings are down 2.5% compared to a year ago. And the median sales price is up 5.25% from one year ago and coming in at $339,800. That is down from one month earlier when we were at $350,000. But this is typically a time of year where we see this number fall. I can show you in a graph in a little bit how it's, uh, there's lots of ups and downs in the market. So as we enter into the winter months, it is typical for prices, the median sales price to fall, and then it will ramp back up in the spring. So this is not uncommon. The absorption rate has increased from 2.41 months to 2.57 months. So that just shows we are seeing a little bit more inventory on the market. And you might ask yourself if new listings are down and home sales are down and inventory is down, why do we have the absorption rate going up showing that we have more inventory? That's because homes are more homes are staying on the market. They're not selling as fast, which we can see from the home sale number being down 22.9%. Even though we're not seeing more homes come on the market, more new listings, we're just seeing the existing listings last on the market longer, which makes for a bigger overall inventory number. Okay, so let's take a look at the data here. When we take a look at see the single family home sales here, we can see this trend line has been going up since basically April, May, it started trending up there, so we've seen more and more inventory come on the market. We can also see over that time frame in East Tennessee that the listing prices have basically stayed pretty much flat. They have not gone up much. They have not gone down much. They've basically stayed right where they are, and that can be attributed to interest rates staying high and not coming down. If interest rates were to come down, we would see those listing prices go up because we would see more things selling. So the interest rates are definitely keeping demand down. We're seeing less buyers in the market because a lot of people just can't afford the current interest rate. So they just aren't getting in the market and pulling the trigger and making offers. But because inventory is so low, we are seeing enough demand to fulfill the amount of inventory that we do have and it is selling thus keeping prices up and that is a, a trend that we are going to continue seeing for quite some time again this line here basically matches this line showing us that the absorption rate since may has been going straight up we are seeing more inventory come on the market and as we see the absorption rate go up uh, we are seeing the sold to list price ratio start to come down, which means you're seeing uh, more negotiation on prices. Homes are being sold for uh, a little less than what they are being listed for, but a lot of that depends on where the home is, what kind of, what type the home is, how much demand there is for that home. We're still seeing some homes go to multiple offers and selling above list price, some well above list price. There was one that we were involved with not too long ago on the lake in Teleco Village that the they offered $75,000 above the list price and still did not get the house. So it all depends on where the house is. So keep that in mind. When we look down here at the homes that are price ranges that are being sold the most. This is again in all of East Tennessee. We can see the number one price range for homes being sold is 
this 300 to 350 price range. 227 homes were sold in September in that price range. That one came out in the lead. Uh, behind that was the 250 to 300 price range, seeing 215 homes sold. Another thing to keep in mind that we're seeing, and we'll talk a little, a little bit about later, is the large amount of luxury homes that were being that are being sold. If we look at homes sold over a million, there were nine between 1 and 1.1, 9 between 1.1 and 1.2, 5 between 1.2 and 1.3, 1, 3 to 1, 4, there were three. So right down the line, we're seeing these luxury homes are selling. This is over 1.7 million. If we even go to 2 million, there were three homes sold between 2 million and 2.25 million in September. Another two here between 2.25 and 2.5. Another two here between this price range. And then we had even other additional sales in between these price ranges here. So we are definitely seeing luxury homes selling in East Tennessee. Okay, let's jump over to the Knoxville data. So this is everything with a Knoxville, Tennessee address. Home sales are down 25.3%. Pending sales are down 4.9%. Inventory of homes is down 13.7%. New listings are down 6.3%. The median sales price in Knoxville is up 8.18% compared to a year ago. And that is coming in at $367,715. Again, that is down from last month. Last month it was at 390000 But again, we did talk about how that can be cyclical. The average sold price per square foot of homes in Knoxville was $216 per square foot. With the absorption rate going up, ticking up month over month to 1.46 months worth of inventory, up from 1.34 months, but still under two months worth of inventory. That is extremely low. A healthy market is five to six months worth of inventory. So again, this is why we will see prices remain high. Um, so let's just, uh, let's jump over and take a quick look at the data here for uh, Knoxville. So again, if we look at the same trend line here for inventory is rising, has been rising since May. So we're seeing that again correlating. If we look at the interest rates, what interest rates have done since May, you'll see a direct correlation actually here. I can show you that real quick. So here's interest rates. So if we look, here's May, and what have they done since May? Boom, boom, gone straight up, right? So that correlates directly with what we're seeing right here. So those interest rates will follow. Inventory will follow interest rates. And then listing prices, again, similar to what we were saying in East Tennessee in general, basically staying flat, not seeing a lot of increases or decreases dramatically with listing prices. We saw a little bit uh, of a tick down as far as so the sold to list price ratio in Knoxville, but still things are selling because there's so little inventory, things are selling pretty close to list price on most sales. When we look down here and take a look at what price ranges are selling the most in Knoxville, it is very similar, if not exactly the same to East Tennessee as a whole. The, the number one seller, 90 sales uh, in September was that 300 dollars to $350,000 price range. That was followed by the three fifty dollars to four hundred dollars price range with 72. Un unlike East Tennessee, where it went down in, in number, this one here in East Tennessee was the second largest, but in Knoxville, there's less inventory and the second biggest sale price range was 350 to 400. And then after that, following that was the 400 to 450 price range. And then again, as we scroll down again, we are seeing quite a few sales in the upper 
750, 800, 850, quite a few sales happening there as well. Um, so there you go. Let's take a look at the active data in Knoxville to see what is happening. Okay, so this is looking at the all of the active data that is up to date. This is through last Friday. So this is out of September and looking current into October as of last Friday. And these numbers over here look over the last three months so we can see a trend line as to what's happening. We saw prices, the median list price trend up through August and then start working its way down. But again, like we said, that is typical of the season, but it's been working its way down pretty good there. New listing prices have stayed pretty flat. There has not been a big jump one way or the other in the median price of new listings. The price per square foot, we have seen that trend down. It started at about 219 square foot three months ago and has been working its way down. And as of last Friday, was at $212 per square foot for the active listings on the market. We have seen the median days on the market trend up. They were at about 28 days three months ago, and now we're at about 35 days. Same goes for price decreases. We've seen price decreases trending up, meaning that the market has softened a little bit. Three months ago, we were only at 30.97% of the homes on the market had a price reduction. And then as of last Friday, we were at 47.54. So just under half of the homes on the market have had a price reduction in Knoxville. Uh, inventory, again, we saw that earlier on the earlier graph has been trending up. Uh, median and the market action index has been trending down. And again, the market action index is this graphic right here, which looks like a speedometer. And the farther to the right it goes means the more of a seller's market it is. Farther to the left it goes, the more of a buyer's market it is. And the buyer's market does not start until it gets to this number 30 range right here. So we are still in a strong seller's market. You can see that it has ticked up a little bit over the last month. So in, because inventory is so low, and this is what the basis of this is, uh, you're looking at demand, supply and demand. So as far as supply and demand goes, we are still deep into a seller's market in Knoxville. So keep that in mind. We can take a look here at this graphic, which looks at the market action index, again, which is that graphic we were just looking at for the supply and demand in different areas of Knoxville. And you can see which zip codes have more are more of a seller's market and which ones are trending a little bit closer to a buyer's market. 37931 is definitely in a seller's market, although it has been starting to trend down, but still deep in a seller's market. 37920 has been trending up, and this is deep into a seller's market at a 68. Remember, a 30, if we go back over here to this and look at this again, 30 is a buyer's market. Below 30 is all buyer's market. And then from 30 and up is a seller's market. So when we look at that here, this is definitely deep into a seller's market. 37919 has been flat, but is still in a seller's market. And I think you'll notice that all of these here are in still in a seller's market because inventory is so low, yet some are definitely more of a seller's market than others. Let's jump over and take a look at the counties. So this is the counties surrounding the area of East Tennessee. Let's take a look and see what those are looking like. So Roan County, available inventory is down 21.9%. Pending sales are down 10.7%. And the median sales price in Roan County is up 35% compared to a year ago and coming in at $320,000 with the uh, average sold price per square foot in Roan County coming in at $175 per square foot. In Knox County, the available inventory is down 13.1% compared to a year ago. Pending sales are actually up 6.3%. And the median sales price is up 7.5% and coming in at $363,500 with the average price per square foot in Knox County 
selling at $215 per square foot. In Anderson County, available inventory is down 4.4%. Pending sales are down 4%. And the median sales price is up in Anderson County 13.21% compared to a year ago and coming in at $300,000. And the average sold price per square foot in Anderson County is $187 per square foot. In Loudoun County, the available inventory is down 3.7%. Pending sales are down 16%, and the median sales price in Loudoun County is up 24.36% and coming in at $497,000, with the average sold price per square foot of a home in Loudoun County coming in at $222 per square foot. In Sevier County, the available inventory is up 5.31%. Pending sales are down a whopping 30.80% in Sevier County, with the median sales price being down 18.5% and coming in at $447,450. Again, directly attributable, attributed to what interest rates have been doing. Sevier County is a county that has a lot of investor sales and investors, obviously, like most people, don't like high interest rates. So there's less buying going on in Sevier County because of that. The average sold price per square foot in Sevier County came in last month at $310 per square foot. In Blount County, the Uh, Available inventory is up 1.3%. Pending sales are down 4.6%. And the median sales price came in up 6.47% at $370,000 with the average sale price uh, for a sold home coming in at $233 per square foot in Blount County. Okay, so that was all the data. Let me just go over some other information about things happening in the East Tennessee and Knoxville real estate market. Prices are again elevated due to low inventory. The East Tennessee and Knoxville housing landscape continues to be shaped by elevated prices as a result of tight inventory. Despite the dynamics, demand remains robust enough to support these levels. So we can expect prices to remain high as long as inventory remains low. And we don't anticipate a wave of inventory hitting the market anytime soon. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you understand that there are multiple reasons for that. Obviously, it's all about supply and demand, and we're not seeing a lot of inventory coming on the market from homeowners because most homeowners are locked into interest rates under 4%, and they don't want to sell their home to trade for an uh, interest rate that's close to 8%. So they are not going to be putting their homes on the market. So inventory from homeowners is not going to be increasing. Also, as far as builders go, Builders are building, but they've slowed down because demand has slowed down. Why is demand slowed down? Because buyers aren't super interested unless they need to get a home right now to get an interest rate at 8%. So, and not, and those that can are doing it, but there are many that just can't afford to get into a home with an 8% interest rate. And I will show you an example of why that is in one minute. Uh, As far as Knoxville home price growth, in a standout performance, Knoxville claimed the 16th spot among the top 100 metros for home price growth in the second quarter of 2023. The city witnessed a 6.8% surge in home prices year over year, which significantly outpaced the national average of only three. Apartment rent growth has moderated. Apartment rents, which soared to an annual growth of 21% in July of 2022, have now stabilized with a more modest 3.9% increase from the previous year in August. 
This is notably higher, though, than the national average, which was just 0.28%. So Knoxville came in at 3.9% increase, the national average only 0.28%. Knox County does have affordability concerns. A recent poll from the East Tennessee Realtors highlighted that 67% of Knox County residents perceive housing affordability as a substantial issue, underscoring the region's housing challenges. Okay, mortgage originations skyrocket. Mortgage origination is when somebody puts in a loan, a application for a mortgage. So Knoxville saw a whopping 117% increase in the home purchase mortgage originations from quarter one to quarter two of 2023. That is the steepest rise across the United States per an Adam Data report of the quarter two 2023. This just reiterates the current demand for homes in the Knoxville area. Yet another reason we should not expect home prices in the area to weaken. Home low supply and continued demand will always equal higher prices. Okay, let's talk about the impact of rising mortgage rates. As the 30-year mortgage rate edges closer to 8%, home buyers and sellers in the East Tennessee region are grappling with increased costs. As of today, actually as of Friday, because that today's a holiday, the, the markets are closed. But as of last Friday, the 30-year interest rate was at 7.8%. 1%. Let me just show you that graphic here. Okay, so here we are. This was October 6th. You can see the 30-year rate was at 7.81%. What does this do to housing affordability? One year ago, if we look in September of 2022, so let's go here, September of 2022, right here, 6.25%. So basically a year ago, we were at 6.25%, and now we're at 7.81%. Let's take a look and see what a difference that makes just in one year on what it would cost on a mortgage for the median priced home in Knoxville. So if we look here real quick, and we look at what is the median price of a home in Knoxville. As of today, this says the median price of a home is 475. Okay, so let's go to this mortgage calculator. We'll type in $475,000, right? We're not going to put anything for down payment or anything at all as far as that goes. So at $475,000 at the current rate of 7.81% for 30 years, we aren't going to calculate taxes or anything. We're just going to do uh, principal and interest. We calculate that comes to 3442. All right, so let's put that in our calculator. 3442 minus, all right, and then let's go back over here again, and we're going to change this to what it was one year ago, 6.25%. And we'll calculate that comes to... 29.24. So let's go back over here. Minus 29.24. And that equals, that's a difference in one year for the same mortgage price, $518 per month in somebody's, you know, in your mortgage payment. That's an additional $518 in mortgage payment simply because the interest rate went from 6.25% to what it currently is at 7.81%. So obviously, this is a big deal. Okay, let's take a look and see what is going on with luxury home sales here. So as far as when we look at this graph, you can see what a disparity there is between pre-pandemic and post-pandemic as far as the luxury home sales go. And this data tells us that it's flourishing. The luxury home market is flourishing in East Tennessee. And we talked a little bit about that earlier when we looked at those numbers of those high dollar homes that are selling. So despite headwinds 
elevated like elevated mortgage rates and reduced migration, the luxury home segment in East Tennessee is booming. In 2023, year to date this year, sales of homes priced over a million dollars have already surpassed the total number from 2015 to 2019 combined. So if you added up all the sales between 2015 and 2019 for homes over a million dollars, they would not equal how many have sold already this year. So that is telling you what an influx of there is of people buying luxury homes in East Tennessee. And also, not only are they selling abundantly, but they're selling quickly because these luxury homes are going under contract in an average of less than 13 days. Okay, so what lies ahead for the East Tennessee and Knoxville real estate market? I believe that the housing market in East Tennessee is likely to fare well in the coming year. Obviously, interest rates are going to have a lot to do with that, but the city has a strong economy, it has a growing population, and it has a relatively low cost of living. And I know many people won't say that because of what home prices have done, but there's a lot of things that go into cost of living, even outside of home prices. And again, when we say a low cost of living, it's comparable to other parts of the country. These factors are are all attractive to home buyers and investors. So in addition, Knoxville is the home uh, of a number of Fortune 500 companies and universities, which provide a steady stream of jobs and new residents. The city is also becoming a popular tourist destination, not becoming, it's always been one, thanks to the proximity to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park and all of the things that are happening in Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, We've got the baseball team coming downtown now, so that's going to be another attraction. So, of course, beyond all that, no housing market is immune to the effects of rising mortgage rates and inflation, but I believe Knoxville's strong fundamentals will help the city weather these challenges. And here's some specific reasons why I'm optimistic about the Knoxville housing market. Number one, Strong, strong job market. Knoxville has a low unemployment rate and a diversified economy with major employers in the healthcare, manufacturing, and technology sectors. Number two, growing population. Knoxville's population is growing faster than the national average, and this is due in part to migration from other parts of the country as well as natural growth. Uh, it's relatively affordable. Knoxville has a relatively low cost of living compared to other major cities in the United States. That makes it an attractive destination for home buyers and businesses alike. And lastly, limited inventory. There's a, sh a shortage of homes for sale in Knoxville, which is putting upward pressure on prices. This trend is likely to continue in the near future. So overall, I believe that the Knoxville housing market is well positioned for continued growth in the coming year. The city's strong economy, growing population, relative affordability, all make it an attractive destination for home buyers and investors. So if you are a home buyer, a seller, or a homeowner, or just a real estate enthusiast, I hope this update has been helpful and educational. If you have any thoughts, definitely comment below. Definitely subscribe as I do these updates every month. And I also update during the month on different things. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I would love to help answer any questions. Or if you have real estate needs, I would love to serve you in that as well. I hope you are having a great day. This was all the data through the end of September. I will be updating you throughout the month with new things that come available as far as data and information on the Knoxville real estate market. But I hope you're having a great day. I've got my hoodie on. We've had a little change in the weather. It's a little cooler outside. So I uh, hope you're enjoying that as well. And I will talk to you soon. This is Troy Stavros with Doorbell Real Estate.